gypsy moon I wandered near and far Looking for the mystery Beneath the northern star Looking for the pot of gold At the rainbow's end Hoping that I'll find it soon Hi, this is Jan Lewis. Welcome to be my guest. Today we have from Auburn the head two head people of the Family Gamers Group, and they are Andrew and Anitra Smith. Welcome. Andrew and Anitra came in here loaded down with games that I have never seen, and maybe some of you have never seen either. I found you online, and we're trying to get a listing of activities and get it out there for people to go to and enjoy. Mm -hmm. And I found this and I said, boy, that sounds really different. I don't think I've ever seen one. The Family Gamers Group. Mm -hmm. When did you start the group? So we've been playing games uh, really as a family for a long time. Since uh, we had a family. Since we had a family, How many kids? Right? So we have three kids. Yeah. Our oldest is eight. Yep. Uh, and she's, she's very, very precocious. So we see a lot of games that say, you know, 10 plus on them. Uh, and those are perfectly <laughs> acceptable for our eight-year-old. Yeah. Um, but we so we've been playing games with them over time, uh, a little bit more. And then as our second child grew uh, grew up a little bit more, he's five now. Uh, we really wanted to migrate away from something where our daughter could play games kind of on her own and doing something to something that was a little bit more of a of kind of a group activity. Yeah. And uh, I've been doing a lot of online blogging and, and, and writing reviews and things for video games and board games for, for a number of years. And um, and we decided that it would be a little bit more fun if we were both working if, on the yeah. same project together. If we together. actually did and it together, so, yeah. Yeah, so that's what we did. And uh, we have a, a bi-weekly group of people that, that meet together, that Twice meet at our weekly. house. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Bi-monthly. It, bi it, it would be bi-weekly or semi-monthly. Those, right. So those. Yeah. yeah. So twice a month. Twice yeah, a month. Right. Twice a month. Exactly. <laughs> That's unusual. A lot of groups just meet once a month. This is cool. Well, I mean, games are fun, yeah. right? So there's no. Uh, we don't. Uh, we don't have to get together, and we don't have to have a quorum and make decisions on th you know things yeah. like that. It's it's it's, uh, the it's only a fun decision, thing to do. Yeah. Is the what only game are we playing? What game are we going to play? What's right. one so. when the group meets? Well, right now, is it still new? You're just gaining more members. Um, right now, uh, we really it, it's really driven by our friends mm -hmm. right now. So it's not it's not even a formal group uh, that you know people would go online and sign up for or anything like that. Uh, but you know our our desire and our goal is to really spread sort of the hobby of of family gaming. You know, board gaming. I mean, you made a comment before about how there's all these games that you've never seen before. Yeah, yeah. Board gaming is really going through an incredible renaissance right now. Mm -hmm. And it's because of a lot of reasons, but a big one is um, Kickstarter and the advent of crowdfunding, because there's a sunk cost with every game that comes out, and so uh, unlike a video game where you spend a lot of time developing it and then you can just make copies and the copies are basically mm -hmm. free, mm -hmm. with a board game you have to pay for all of the pieces yeah. every time you make one. And so it can be really cost prohibitive to do that and to take risks, especially if you are an independent game developer. Um, but because of crowdfunding, because there's a mechanism now where you can get that money up front mm -hmm. uh, to make your game, you can you don't have to invest a large amount of capital just to get something out there for people to potentially buy. Did you have you all have you been creating games yourself, or either one of you for years? Or? We dabble in game creation yeah. uh, a little bit, but it just what that in what that independent movement and what that crowdfunding thing has really allowed is a lot of different ideas can can come out. There's a lot less risk associated with trying something new. Yeah, and definitely. you know, a lot of your your bigger game developers like a game right, we have a game right game here or Days of Wonder who made Ticket to Ride, which we have uh, here as well. Uh, they have a much better read on the market. Mm. They can tell who's buying what and who's doing what, but uh, a, a great example is this game here. Hold this one up. Uh, tell us about. We'll so this is a game called The Princess and the Goblin. This is a game that was Hold uh, this up so they can, so oh, he can oh, we'll go up here. right in on it. There, there you go. go. Can you so zero this game in on that box? was crowdfunded on Kickstarter. Crowdfunded meaning help you buy all these games for the group? No, no, no. 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 So is... in order to develop this game, oh, okay. uh, the game creator, yeah. uh, Dennis crowd. Hoyle of Bellwether Games, okay. put the game up on um, on Kickstarter and okay. said, this is the game, yeah. this is the mechanics, this is how the game works. Mm -hmm. This game is actually... Um, it's based on a classic um, children's right novel. Uh, by a man named George McDonald. Yeah. 
Um, he did a lot of fairy tale type stories um, back in the late 1800s, mm-hmm. I think it was. Um, so this particular game, the creator, I forgot his name. Uh, that would be Dennis Hoyle, but Dennis with Hoyle. Bell other games. Yeah. Um, he took this story, existing story, of the princess and the goblin, the princess and Curdie, mm-hmm. and turned it into this sort of maze-finding, path-finding game. Is it easy? <laughs> it's it's pretty easy. It's, right. it's, it says on it to a 7+, plus, and I think that's true. Okay, then I could handle it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe afterwards we could play a game. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... You know, this is a great example of a game where it's a little bit different, and maybe a bigger publisher might not take a risk on it. Yeah. But because of that crowdfunding uh, model, you can really reach out to the whole world and say, "This is the game I want to make," and you can get that feedback before you've invested all the capital. And that's why and there's such a wide breadth of games that are available now. And you're reaching out directly to your consumers, your your possible consumers, to say, "Hey, I don't know if a publisher is interested in this, but how about you guys? Are you interested in it? Would you play it? Would you pay?" For- money for it, and if enough people say, yes, I would pay money for it, then you awesome. have the capital to make it. Mm-hmm. Now you've got, what, show us somewhere, there's Dragon, what's a Dragonwood? Yep. Let's so this hold is that a, up so, so this, that this is a neat look looking game as well. This is Dragonwood, and Dragonwood uh, is a game that is published by Game Right, who's actually out of Newton, mm-hmm. uh, so they're pretty close to us, and this is a great game. Can you get, hold on just a second, can you get that, uh, Paul, away from me and on to, uh, there you go, alrighty. So this is a great game for kids because it has a lot of sort of rummy style mm-hmm. um, mechanics to it, uh, where you're you're making sets uh, almost poker like as well. You make you know flush sets, straight sets, things like that, mm. like X of a kind. That's Pokemon. I remember my son used to play that. <laughs> they had to have all these sets of cards. Mm-hmm. Well, oh. Pokemon's a little bit different. Yeah. It's a that's a trading card game, so mm-hmm. it is a little bit of a of a different game, but. With a game like Dragonwood, the goal of the game is actually to uh, to capture these monsters. Mm. And you do that by playing different sets of cards. And depending on the type of set, it's a different kind of attack. And so uh, the different monsters have different defense numbers. Mm-hmm. And they're all based on whether you want to scream at, <laughs> at, an, at, an, at a monster or a stomp on a monster. Yeah. Um, I don't even remember what the other one is. Uh, strike. Strike, strike, strike. Strike a monster. monster, of course. So one of those, one of those is to, um, you, you make a, you know, cards of all the same color. The other one is cards of all the same number. And the third one is making a, um, a straight. A straight. Mm-hmm. So then the, the colors don't matter. Um, but depending on how many of those cards you put together, then you get to roll that many dice um, to determine to whether or not, you, can whether or not you can beat the monster. Oh wow! How long has this game been so, out? Uh, this game came out last year. But so, yeah, it seems kind yeah, of it's, new. It's relatively new. Um, again, published by Game Right, who uh, where we've got a great relationship with Game Right. We like Game Right. Um, they must love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> totally. But it's re- it's great because especially with all of the Lord of the Rings stuff. I mean, this kind of medieval fantasy theme is very very popular right now. Mm-hmm. And it's a it's a wonderful game for parents to play with their kids because this isn't Candyland for the millionth time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but your your kids are also going to learn a little bit about probability. They're going to kind of figure, well, if I can get more cards that go together, then I have a better chance of defeating a monster. And they can really put strategy together without playing a super difficult game. What what's your opinion of Monopoly? It's still out there, alive and well. <laughs> um, it takes a long time to get through it. <laughs> we, we sometimes joke and call it monotony. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, sometimes um, it's just along. It it is. It's it's definitely still a fun game. Sometimes um, we didn't bring it with us to show, but one of my favorites is um, there's a variant of Monopoly that's called Monopoly Deal. Ooh. They took all the kind of cutthroat buying and selling property and turned it into a card game that lasts five to twenty minutes. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Well, is it like the the fun buying and selling of the real estate, making a deal? Is that it? Um, not really. Uh, you you are able to you draw cards to get money to purchase real estate, and you the way to win the game is to have three of the set of the standard sets oh. of of real estate. But there's also cards that allow you to steal real estate from other people, oh. or to make everybody pay you, uh, or rent. to make everybody pay you rent, or things like that. Do you like that. To, or do you owe anything, or do you just keep running with the money? Well, it, it all—it really all depends. I don't think. Well, you keep handing the money back and forth between the players as you're oh, playing. Oh, okay. So it's right. sort of like uh, what's that word? When you reuse things. Oh, what's the word? Oh, not, not regurgitate. <laughs> what is the word? Um, oh, I, I can't think. Recycle. Of it. Recycle. Oh, there when you, you recycle go. There you them. Go. 
All right, this looks kind of fun. What is this? Tell me. Okay, I'm gonna. Here's what I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna set this game up. Okay. It'll take just a minute. All I'll right. set this game up. We've got plenty of room here. Okay. And and we can really talk about this game. This is a game designed for very young children. Okay. Um, but fantastic for adults too. Yeah. Well, that sounds good. Yep. So <laughs> this is called Zitternix or Keep It Steady. Okay. Okay. It's it's made by a company called Haba. Which makes a lot of really great yeah. tactile games for children, and and they also make a lot of um, wooden toys for really young children, one and two year olds. Um, so this is sort of bridging that gap between toy and game. All right. So what we what, what we have here is we have these yellow sticks, and mm -hmm. we have red mm -hmm. sticks, and we have blue sticks, and you can see the different sticks are different thicknesses. Yeah, yeah. So the way the game works is we take all the sticks, we put them kind of in a pile like this, uh, we sort of mix them up, and we put this wooden ring, we take this ring and we put it around the sticks like that. Whoop, you dropped one. Oh, no, did I? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let me grab that. Okay. We all put it in here, now. <laughs> and now we just twist it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, okay? twist it. Just like that. Yeah. Okay, now that you see the ring sitting right in the middle of the stack. Yeah. Now we take turns. You roll the die. Go ahead, roll the die. Okay, so you got a red. So now you have to pull a red stick out. Okay. Oh, oh so okay, you so want to make sure you don't lose this. So you want to make sure this ring never touches the table. Right, so eventually, as I pull, eventually it'll fall over, just like that. And that person loses. And that person, that loses. person loses. How easy is that? It's very easy. It's a fun game uh, to play with adults. It's a fun game to play with children because it's... It, it is instantly understandable what the goal of the game is. For you know, a I actually I actually play this game with our two year old, um, trying to trying to teach him to take turns. You know, yeah. roll roll the die and then and then pull a stick, or yeah. sometimes just okay, it's your turn to pull a stick, and now it's my turn to Does pull a like stick. It? Going back and forth, we played it six times in a row the other day, and then I was like, <laughs> all right, I'm I'm ready to go do we're, something we're tiring else. Of this yeah. Game. Um, yeah, definitely. That's but, a, that is a really cute game. Where can people get? Can they get them online? Yep, so a any of these games are going to be available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, what we actually did this year was we put together a gift, a holiday gift list. Mm -hmm. So uh, our website is thefamilygamers.com, and you can go to thefamilygamers.com forward slash holiday 2016. That's great, and then people can just figure out which games they'd like. Yep, yep. so what we did is we broke it out into age ranges. Mm -hmm. So we have a range for younger children, two to six maybe? Uh, I think we started, we started zero to three. Yeah. Um, right, so zero to three, then, then and maybe a three to five, six to twelve, and then thirteen plus. So there's we put four or five games in each one of those sections. Mm -hmm. And then we also had a, a, a section of just party games, because mm -hmm. sometimes you have a lot of people. You have eight, ten, twelve people, mm -hmm. and you need to figure out a game that's going to work for all those people. So that gets a little bit more difficult. And we also created it, um, a section for two-player games. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our games now are, are multiple players. Uh, Zitternix or Keep It Steady is an example of a game mm -hmm. that could be two players, mm -hmm. could be three, four, or more. But there's a lot of really great games out there for people, for just just two people. And for us, you know, that's, sometimes that's nice when, for us. Yeah. when our kids go to bed, it's yeah. nice to <clears throat> sit down, have mm -hmm. a glass of wine, and play a game. So. Well, no, with the, the group, when it meets, how, about how many are coming? How, where do you put them all? <laughs> it really depends yeah. on, on the night. Sometimes it's us and another couple, and, and we'll play a four-player game together. Uh, last week or the week before, we had eight people over. and yeah. So we, well, I guess we had six people over. So we well, set up two tables, and yeah. we... We play two separate games. How far do they travel to come to your house to do this? Um, <clears throat> most of them aren't coming real far. Um, like like he said, most of the people who come to our regular game nights are, are close friends, people yeah. we see regularly from mm -hmm. from church and school and work and things like that. Um, our, our big goal in Family Gamers is not so much to say, hey, people, you need to come play with games with us, but instead... Go play games together. Go play games with your kids. Mm -hmm. right. The tagline for our show and for our site is play games with your kids. I mean, that's awesome. that's our goal. Now, here's another one. This looks like a regular book, right? Yeah, what so is it's this is it's designed to kind of look like a book. Sit it's on called, your bookshelf. It's, it's called <laughs> Bring Your Own Book. Yeah. This is another game that's made by Game Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, this plays on a pretty common style of game that you see right now. That I've thrown these around, so the cards are everywhere. Oh. Uh, have you ever heard of Apples to Apples? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah but I think that guy on uh, radio, Glenn Beck, was promoting <laughs> Apples to Apples. Okay. What the heck is okay, that? Okay, so Apples to Apples is a fun game. Apples to Apples is a game where you have green cards, mm -hmm. which are adjectives. 
and you have red cards, which are nouns. Mm -hmm. And the way the game works, you have a group of people, and it, it literally can be any number of people, that all sit... Three or more. Basically yeah. in a circle. Three or more, okay. And one person, the, the judge kind of either rotates around the circle or the last person to win a card would become the next judge, would take one of these green cards, and it would it would be some kind of adjective, spunky or scary or something like that. And they'd put it down and they would say, I am scary. Mm. And everybody would put a face down noun card. Okay, because everybody's got a handful of red cards. Okay. And so the judge would then take them all once everybody's everybody's put a card down and then go through them and find whichever noun they think best that person is best described best. by okay. that adjective. Now mind you, they don't know who's put what cards yeah, down. Yeah, right. And so that person kind of wins the green card as a trophy card. And then however many cards they have when they decide to stop, whoever has the most kind of win. It's no, not it's complicated really at all. So that's apples to apples. Now this is called... This book? is Bring Your Own Book. This is a, a little bit of a, 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 a takeoff of that. So if we were to take a, one of these cards, uh, I don't know if, if you'll be able to make that card out. You can no, try. It's probably is too... It? Yeah, maybe. There you go. Okay, yeah, so there's a... Bit. There's a yellow description which yep. says... Which says, the moment in a fantasy novel when the hero is chosen. And there's mm -hmm. also a blue one, which is... Which is upside down and says, a <laughs> a caption in a fashion magazine. Okay, go. so this would be an example of a card somebody would draw, and they could pick which one they wanted to read. Yeah. The thing that's different about Bring Your Own Book is everybody comes to the table with a book that they own. This this game book. Yep. No, 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 no. Any a book. book. Any book off the oh, shelf. Or any book. Any book. Yes. A cookbook. We've played with cookbooks, with textbooks, with novels. Okay. We've, I've is this your list of books people have brought? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So the All way right. the inside of this box is designed is you can kind of write down books that people oops, right there. that people have played the game with. It's just a way to kind of have a running history. It's almost like a guest book of books. So you bring your own book. Okay. And so you flip through the book quickly, and the first person to find something in their book. About that, that they think that fits, fits the description, this description of, says, I've got it. Yeah. And they flip this timer over, which gives everybody one more minute to find something in their books. Cool. So everybody's looking, but yeah. whoever does it first, everybody else gets one more minute so the game doesn't last forever. Okay. And then you go around, the, around and you read them off. And sometimes we have uh, really charismatic people in the group that will read them with a lot of flair. Yeah, and, I mean, that's... And, and that's always entertaining. And sometimes you have kind of the dry delivery, and that's fine too. Uh, but the neat thing about it is it's the the game is never the same because no. the books that come to the game are never the same. You must have some very interesting books that come along. <laughs> well, uh, I once brought the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Modern Guide to Bodybuilding. Oh, did that work? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. Okay, it worked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so that's how Bring Your Own Book works. And then once, so remember how I said with mm. Apples to Apples, you, you would win that green card as like mm. your... Your prize. So in this, you you Win take card. you take the card, and once somebody gets two cards, everybody rotates books to the left. So you don't get to keep you don't using get to keep your book. The, the same book that I you mean, started you with. I mean, you walk away from the game with your book, of course. <laughs> yeah. But for the purpose of the game, everybody moves their books to the left. And okay. So this is so a, we're gonna we're gonna share here. Yeah. Okay. So the first couple of rounds, you're working with you know the book that you brought and presumably you're familiar with, and then all of a sudden you end up with someone else's book and you're like, well, I don't know anything about this book. I'm just gonna keep kind of flipping through until something catches my eye yeah. and trying to come up with something that way and it it, oh. it evens up the playing field nicely. You know what, I like the side, at first I thought these new games would be really kind of tricky to learn. Mm -hmm. So far I haven't heard anything that's tricky. Right, yeah. actually the hardest game here is the game that we uh, classify as a gateway game to get people into more complicated board games. Which one? Did That's actually uh, right. one of the games okay. over Which here. Which one? Well, Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride, the one with the choo-choo train. Mm -hmm. What's that all about? So, uh, for for what, really the game I think that kicked off the board game renaissance was a game called Catan or Settlers of Catan, mm -hmm. which you might have heard about. No. Um, we think that Ticket to Ride is a better gateway game. And Ticket to Ride is a game where you play on a map, and the default map is the map of the United States. And there's a lot of different maps with some slightly adjusted mechanics and things like that for kind of expandability. But So you have a map of the United States, and it has all these cities on it. Yeah. And what you do at the beginning of the game is you draw these route cards, which tell you which routes you have to build your train routes to go, to go through. Mm -hmm. And over the course of the game, you draw these different colored uh, train car cards and you have to build the route. The, all the routes are on the map, and they're all colored different colors. Yeah. And so you have to draw enough enough train cars to go from city to city. And so you would play the, that those colors to go from one city to another. Mm -hmm. And then you you would place physical little trains on on the map. Huh. And then 
as so you're drawing these cards, yeah. you have to play the cards to put the trains down, and once you complete that route, you get a set of points. Yeah, you're that's trying associated yeah. with that route. And your your goal, you have a you have secret cards in your hand that are your goal of connecting certain cities on the map. Uh -huh. Usually cities that are not very close. Right. Okay, are they make believe so, cities or no, real they, cities? No, it is re it's real it cities real on cities the real United States map. Yeah. So like Los Angeles, San is Francisco, Boston. Is that like a longer Boston. game than these ones you've shown? Yes. Yes. Okay. This sounds I would like say it might so. be longer. It is. It's a little bit more complicated. How many for more sure. people can play it? Four, maybe. Uh, uh, I think you could play five, five people in Ticket to Ride. Five, five people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it tough to win? It depends. It's <laughs> it's tough to win, like but winning. usually, <laughs> well, but usually. One of the reasons we like it as a, as shall we say, a gateway game to these, to the more complicated strategy kind of games, is because usually somebody doesn't pull way out in front. Yeah. Um, a someone who's played it a num a lot of times will do better than someone who's brand new at it. Sure. But it's not the kind of game where you're gonna feel like, oh man, I just you know, because I didn't know what I was doing yet. I just did awful, and, and they beat the yeah. pants off of me. It, instead, it's sort of a, oh, okay, now I mm -hmm. see how it worked together. I can do better next time. And for most people, we found that there's definitely that, oh, yeah, I can do this better, and mm -hmm. I, yeah. I want to try it again. We're talking with Anitra and Andrew Smith, husband and wife, with their children, children at home. And they are the, well, I was the inventors of this, this group called the Family Gamers. Mm -hmm. And how, how can people reach you? So the best way to really get a hold of us is to go to our website, thefamilygamers.com. We're also on Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash familygamersAA. So that's Andrew and Anitra. Yep. Uh, we also have a Twitter feed, um, twitter.com slash familygamersAA. Again, Andrew and Anitra, going with a the theme. Yep. And uh, you can also just email us directly, andrew at thefamilygamers.com or... Anitra at thefamilygamers.com. Well, I found you on... Um Listing of meetups, I think, online. I think, actually, you emailed us right after we first published in the Yankee Express. Okay. So my that's guess is that's where you All would right, have found the Yankee us. Express, mm -hmm. and you, that's how I find, I read so. that. That's a good, good newspaper. So, yeah, mm -hmm. we, have a, we now have a regular column in, uh, in, the, in Yankee the Yankee Express, Express. in all of their okay, different that's... editions around the central Massachusetts. Tell me now what this one is, the Maze Racers. What okay, the Maze Racers is, an, is another uh, wonderful game that um, is really great for, for all ages. Yeah. Inside the box are two, um, I guess, rings? White, I mean, whiteboards. Do, they're whiteboards with, with a border around it. And there's a lot of magnetic pieces made of styrofoam. Should we open it up and, and yeah, show sure. sure. Why don't we open that right up? Right. All righty. I'm well, we're going to go. All right. Here we go. There. You talk. I'll open it. Okay. There you go. So here you go. So you got two of these whiteboards. Mm -hmm. Oh, like it's, it's magnetic. Cool. It's, yep. it's already got some magnets on here. And so the way the game works is that each player, there's there's two of these whiteboards in here, and there's yellow and there's blue pieces. Each player will agree on a starting and an ending quadrant. You can see it says, mm -hmm. you know, one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. And the starting quadrant gets this green green piece. The end quadrant gets the red one. And then you just take all of your pieces and you make a maze with the pieces. On. Can all take turns doing them? No, no, there's no you turns. So there's another there's once. another board in here. Okay. So there's a second board. So can the pieces be touching each other? It's sort of oh, like yeah. a it's stained oh, glass yeah. effect, am I right? So you you absolutely you just make a maze. So so there's oh, a, a little, maze with like trails. Okay. Yeah. So right. there's little there's a marble. Right. There should be another one right. in here somewhere. So that's what right. you do, and then yeah. whoever gets so, it done first wins. So and so then once you're done, yeah. uh, once one person finishes their maze, again they flip a timer, and the other person has that amount of time to finish making their maze, and then you trade boards and you race each other's mazes to see who can get through the other person's maze faster. <laughs> Does, does that really work? It oh, must yeah. work. Yep. Oh, yeah. So they give these little uh, these little wooden spacers that you can... Um, I'll take one out so it's a little bit easier to see how these things work. So they give you these spacers while you're building your maze. And so if you put a PC... We've got this yellow piece here. You can kind of run this around it just to make sure that mm -hmm. if a ball is going through, it has enough room. And so, you know, if, if this is your opening... If you push this in here, you'll see, oh, the ball can't go through here. Mm. Well, maybe that's okay. Maybe you're trying to trick someone to attempt it. Yeah. Uh, but if, if when you build it, you ha there has to be a, a, legal, a legal maze yeah. involved. So sure. you have a tool like this that you can kind of move around as you're building your maze to make sure that it's fair. 
Okay, and it's sort of like the object of it is to see if you can't make it slower for the other one when they're doing it, make it trickier, the whole thing yeah. trickier. Sure. Yep. Yeah, you're trying to make a tricky maze while hoping that you have enough skill to get through the other person's tricky maze. Right. Well, that's now, sometimes great. Kids when we, and adults. When, when yes. we play with our kids, sometimes we'll like make a maze that's a face or something like yeah, that, just right. to kind of be silly. Yeah. Um, or, of, or we can relent on them and not make them too complicated. One of one of our great. one of our son's uh, favorites is to basically say, "Okay, start was in three and end was in two, and that's it. That's your maze." So now you've got to kind of move it now back. Now you got to figure out how to it get it onto the, right. the without having any walls to to. Balance again. Great idea. So yeah. So this. How is old is this game? How long is it? This game out? also came out last year. It came out yep. last year. Yep. How do you hear of these? You're, because you're always online on the, um, looking for new games. That's so, the thing. So so Maze Racers, we actually found there is a there's a festival for independent game developers mm -hmm. that's held at MIT every year in September called the Boston Festival of Indie Games, mm -hmm. and you can go to bostonfig.com mm -hmm. and find out about that. And so we went there and we met a gentleman named a Andy who created this game mm -hmm. and we got to talking and we've actually become pretty good friends now. Yeah. And he developed this game and, and we were able to pick up a, a few copies of it and yeah. you know, give some away on our show. Right. Uh, so yeah, that's how we found Maze Racer. On your show? Yep. So, show? so we have an audio podcast okay. uh, that comes out. We, we shoot for every other week. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's a little longer than that because... You know, it's two of us and we have three kids. Yeah. Um, but we talk a lot about different kinds of board games, the games that we've been playing, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff that you know is really almost parenting related. How do we deal yeah. with kids and screen time? Because sure. we talk about video games sometimes too, and a lot of stuff like that. It's really we try to make it a resource for parents yeah. uh, that you know sometimes they don't they just don't know what to get their kids. And this is it. We know that yeah. Candyland and Games like It Shoots and Ladders yeah. are mind-numbing and boring. So if you're hearing anything in the background, they are mowing the lawn outside. And it's kind of like like a yeah. dinosaur. There's nothing wrong in the studio. So you've got we have about two minutes left. Anitra and Andrew Smith, the family gamers. Any parting words for families which you'd like to get across? I think the most important thing is Please. what we always say. Okay. Play, Play games, games with, with your kids. kids. Play games with your kids. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. I learned an awful lot. I've never seen these games before, but they all look like fun. It's our, it's our pleasure. It's, Thanks so much for having us. You're welcome. Thank See you next time. I'll be my guest. Riding on a shooting star Heading out toward a dream Tomorrow's even closer Than it seems Through the cloudless sky Heading out toward the moon